Obsidian's Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire has only just recently launched, but has already been heralded as a legendary RPG. The biggest criticisms? Somewhat ironically have been surrounding the game's main story, which is not unlike the previous game's main issue. I personally couldn't care less about the main plot, despite them feeding you a juicy cinematic at the start that is somehow supposed to make me care about it all. Pillars of Eternity 2 is a good game, but a game that the main plot seems like a side quest. Where's the strong main story Obsidian games have been known for with games like Neverwinter Nights 2, KOTOR 2, and Fallout New Vegas? This has certainly been interesting to me, prompting from me some further investigation. Recently, there's been some drama surrounding Obsidian and a particular ex-employee, Chris Avalon. What started as a question of me wondering why PoE 1 and 2 had such a lackluster main plot quickly became much, much more as the story unfolded. This drama between Chris Avalon and Obsidian has spanned years back. Chris Avalon was a founder at Obsidian and a known key facet of their creative team responsible for characters such as Kreia, Ravel, and Grieving Mother, as well as main stories such as KOTOR 2 and the often lauded Planescape Torment when he was a part of Interplay. We can't say that timing isn't a bit convenient, as some of the more recent allegations from Chris come just days away from Obsidian's new Pillars of Eternity 2 launch. But whether it's convenient or not, it's worth investigating into the merit of these allegations, if there is any. Chris Avalon left the company back in 2015 despite being an original founder. This meant that the company lost one of its owners. Chris spoke about this on RPG Codex in the form of a forum post. Apparently, Chris was de-ownered, which led to him quitting the company. This was a regular insult, according to Chris, that the other owners also were threatened by, the CEO. Now, there's so much here that we can unpack, but most of that will be done in a future video on Obsidian as a whole. For now, let's just focus more on Chris Avalon's accusations and how they relate to Pillars of Eternity and its story problems. Chris Avalon, who also accused Obsidian Upper Management for attempting to force him to sign an NDA in order to release what he was previously owed. A rather serious allegation, one that he committed to when he also stated that this timing was during his mother's medical treatment, which he believes was a deliberate attempt at leverage. To make matters worse, the de-ownering also coincidentally happened around the same time that Chris asked the CEO, Fergus Yurkehart, why his wife was on payroll despite not doing anything for the company. A claim that was further supported in another post by Chris, where he stated that Fergus had also attempted to do the same with his children. All of this certainly sounds reprehensible if true, but something else Chris said in his RPG Codex interview that really caught my eye in relation to the topic at hand is how he mentioned his confusion as to how the PoE 1 main story was even okayed by the creative team. The Pillars of Eternity series is a surely great one, but one that really relies on side quests and companions more so than its main plot. For a breakdown of the mostly forgettable PoE 1 storyline, check out this video on YouTube. A main plot should be memorable, in fact, because it's the main course, so to speak. The other stuff is kind of the window dressing, the appetizer, if you will. Pillars of Eternity in many ways gets by by its merit and other aspects of gaming. This is a bit of an anomaly for a company in Obsidian, which has always been used to being this strong storyline writer. These are stories we are all racking our brains in unison right now thinking about and likely have standout moments that we all remember something PoE sort of lags. According to Chris, he was told by members of Obsidian that initial drafts of PoE 1 storyline were tepid, something confirmed by Eric Finstermaker, who was a creative lead on PoE 1. Eric said that management okayed the story because it was time to say good enough. That doesn't sound very supportive and it shows in PoE 1 storyline. Eric and Chris both worked together on Fallout New Vegas with another writer, John Gonzalez. Apparently, Eric Finstermaker had a history of being quite polarizing amongst writers. Chris stated that Eric had essentially chose not to deal with John Gonzalez, which resulted in John leaving the company of Obsidian before Pillars of Eternity 1's launch. This explains why he wasn't working on the project. Enter Pillars of Eternity 1, a project that Eric Finstermaker had lead creative control over, where Obsidian chose to rely on his creative vision versus Chris Avalon's, who on numerous occasions had given them gold. In an interesting turn of events, I would say at least, Obsidian stuck Chris on companion character duty, where he was responsible for grieving Mother and Durance, a task that us fans being the judge would say he did well with. But that's not the whole story. 
Eric apparently had cut much of both characters after Chris had already turned in his writing. Reasons weren't given, and it seemed like in a strange way, Eric attempted to bypass having to explain himself to Chris by going directly to the game's senior designer, Joss Sawyer. This is something Eric actually came out on record for and apologized for after the fact, so this confirms that it happened. It certainly seems quite strange a company that Chris Avalon was a founder of wouldn't even give the guy creative lead the position that he wanted on a project. I mean, look at the guy's resume. Just about every project that he's touched has turned to gold. Obsidian launching Pillars of Eternity 1 with an admitted good enough storyline is not what fans of Obsidian expect. Pillars of Eternity 2 launched just a few days ago, and by all accounts, mine included, has certainly improved their game, more specifically the story elements. But I can't help but feel like the main story is still just lacking polish, which is most evident in the pacing problems the game suffer from as well as the shaky introduction. Was the Lost Soul New Beginning the most original way to tell this story? That's essentially the whole amnesiac introduction story, which has been done only a few times. Did we really need the old protagonist in the game? These felt sort of like cheap gimmicks that magically explained the need to carry over an old protagonist to the new game. Oh, and by the way, starting at level 1. Why do I care that some god is rampaging other than, well, they forced me to care? The main plot in PoE 2 is the kind of plot that where you're doing side quests and the main plot happens to overlap a region or something, and you think to yourself, oh yeah, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. And then you continue doing your side quests in apathy. Am I not worthy of redemption? So you will do nothing? Apathy is death. Worse than death. Because at least a rotting corpse feeds the beasts and insects. It's worth asking the question of who else wrote Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire, because according to the wiki page, it's primarily Carrie Patel, who is also a writer of the first game. Carrie and team has done a fantastic job with the game's lore, side quests, as well as companions, but the main plot? I mean, it's just forgettable. I would rather do my side questing and troll the seas with my schloop than do that. I mean, this is Obsidian after all. At one point had writers behind Fallout New Vegas, like Eric Finstermaker, John Gonzalez, Chris Avalon, who wrote KOTOR 2, George Zietz, who wrote Neverwinter Nights 2 and Mask of the Betrayer expansion, and more and more. Writers many of us, especially in regards to Chris Avalon, regard as quite legendary. And yet Obsidian has to field a relative newcomer to write their biggest project yet. I don't think this is good news, because if these issues that Chris Avalon pointed out in his allegations are indeed true, there might be a good chance we don't see those old writers back at the company working on another game for Obsidian. And that's a shame to see Obsidian lose part of its identity as it transitions to becoming a somewhat new company at this point, sort of the same transition that Bioware and Bungie had to go through. It might get to a point where we have to just stop assuming that we will get quality from these devs, as they lose what made them who they were originally. I don't want to ring the alarm so to say, especially when Pillars of Eternity 2 is a great game. I'm just a bit sad to see writing I considered once legendary sort of fading away, and the developer I considered a face of Obsidian no longer with the company and rather disenfranchised with them. I get a little bit worried, especially with all the accusations about having family on the payroll, getting rid of different writers because of a lack of management, and etc. I will make another video at some point analyzing Obsidian as a whole company, but that's in the future. For now, just thanks for watching. I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video and also support my content. If you want to support my content even more, you can head over to patreon.com slash nerdslayer. We've got some goals set up, we've got some reward tiers set up, and we even have an about blurb that details what we're going to be doing with the future of the channel. Anything's helpful and you can donate as little as $1, which I will greatly appreciate. Thank you.